brought to you live from JRC Stocks, and we're going to co-host with OTC Method Kiko Stocks. We are not licensed investment advisors. We're not financial planners. Please do your due diligence properly with your investment advisor. This space is for entertainment pay entertainment purposes only and i expect that you guys will do your own due diligence know what you own and go out there and make as much money as possible with what you found out thank you for joining us here on otc stock talk we're going to get rocking in just a second what's up stock awareness glad to see you back justin d iguana investments haven't seen you for a minute glad to see you in the house today today we're going to have a follow-up q a with idkff Man, that company's been rocking rough over 100% since last time we talked to him a few weeks ago, and I don't expect him to stop. What's up, Long Boy Stick? Sam, nice to have you in the house, man. Jay Charles, good to see you back. Sheldon, you are in. Let me get you up here. Sheldon, I'm going to send you a invite to speak. There you go. Just click that microphone button in the bottom left to be able to come in. And if you would, after joining, hold on a second. We'll get growing as soon as we have everybody in the house. Man, what a crazy day in the market today. There's been uh, Nyla. Wow, that stock has been running. Hold on. We'll talk about that in a little bit. If I just be, nope. All right. I got you co-hosting there, Kiko Stocks. <laughs> Sheldon, how are you, my man? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. You've been busy since we last talked. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It's, it's only beginning, as I told you guys last week. You know, just uh, lock in that date that we had our first call. I think I think proof is in the pudding, and there's a lot of pudding going on right now. Um, yeah. I want to um, – there's so many questions to be had. We're going to try to get – keep it under under 45 minutes so that everybody can digest – the amount of content that you have to provide. I mean, this is going to be exciting. OTC, you in the house today. You betcha. Excited to hear about uh, all the latest uh, with the 3D. What a move since our last chat. Just been fantastic. And uh, looking forward to open mic afterwards. Awesome. Well, guys, we have a lot. Of, I mean, I think one of the hot stocks to talk about today is Nyla, but I'm pretty sure we'll find out in a little bit. Oof. Yeah. Caveat emptor today. Ouch. That I sucks know. for somebody. OTC, hey, guys, while you're, while you're in this room, go ahead and share the space. Let everybody know it's starting. DM some people. Let them know to bring some stocks they want to talk about and so you do due diligence later. And anybody, anybody that's been tracking IDKFF wants to be on this call. It's going to start in just a second. All right, we'll get going. People will join as we go. Uh, All right, you, just to set the stage, I want to recap. Me? Can you see me, by the way? Uh, no, there's no video. You can be completely naked. Nobody oh, knows. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. No worries. I'll talk to my phone. <laughs> All right. Um, just to recap, we talked about uh, – a number of different companies under the 3D brand and Hypercycle, TotaQ were top on the list last time. Um, those companies are doing some amazing AI stuff, and I can't wait for some follow-up on that. Um, they just came back from the NVIDIA conference. Now, last time we talked to um, Sheldon, he said that he had communications with NVIDIA, and couldn't disclose anything else, but hopefully we'll be able to dive into a few things and see really what we can expect this company to do over the next few months and years. So let's get this rolling. Sheldon, for those that didn't attend the first space, can you give like a three-minute summary of who you are, your track record, and the sectors you invest in? Sure. Um, Sheldon and Montage here. Um, been in the uh, microcap space um, basically my whole career, professionally managing a large fund, uh, then basically building a, call it micro cap ETF. You can call it a, uh, a small cap um, ARC financial, similar to what Kathy Wood's running, except on the micro cap basis. 
and uh, did it with a company called Pine Tree Capital. Um, you know, the shares went from 12 cents to $26. Um, had many exits, uh, over a billion dollars, built those companies, uh, basically sold out and retired. And then my son uh, graduated, uh, worked at a bank, and then uh, wanted to get into this business. So I started 3D Capital. Awesome recap. Can you give a brief two-minute summary on the investment we talked about last time, TOTIQ, micropayments, and the names backing it? And the names, sorry? And the names backing TOTIQ. Oh, the names backing it. Well, um, there's going to be, uh, this is going to be a rock and roll uh, event here. Uh, but Yes, so TOTOQ's micropayments, uh, we believe it's uh, extremely disruptive. It's uh, a technology that people have tried to do for a long time. The reason they couldn't do them is because of the cost per transaction was high and the speed was slow. Our cost per transactions are fractions of a penny and the speed is infinite. So this is a, a game changer in opening up an entirely new space where you can ostensibly do transactions for two cents and it makes sense to the purchaser and it makes sense for the seller of the content. You know, you could, for example, want to search an article and you're a researcher and that article be, could be 30 years ago, but it's involved some genetic thing and so forth. And you don't want to subscribe to Nature magazine or New England Journal and you just want that article, but you only want to pay six cents. Well, the content provider never could do that because it would cost them 50 cents to process that transaction. Now that it's fractions of a penny, uh, people who do not want to be in a subscription model or for a movie or it could be any application can actually do on a pay-per-use basis. And I believe that uh, probably six out of the eight billion people in the world come into that category and this business model opens up that market for them. You know, it's almost like Netflix and others that have the long tail of, of uh, old content that basically is just buried inside uh, someone's subscription. People might want to buy that and you can monetize it. So uh, this is this is a game changer. Uh, Partners Google launching with Google and two major Canadian banks, RBC and CIBC. Um, there's going to be a very, very substantial announcement in the next 30 days of a new world-class tech player, you know, like in the FANG kind of uh, uh, arena that um, I think is just going to uh, take this to a whole other level. So the company is really exploding in terms of uh, the value proposition of doing micropayments. Um, it's going to be international. Uh, you're going to see telephone companies get involved. It's, 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 it's an extremely robust business model that, um, again, uh, the launch is occurring basically in the month of April. And we're right at the doorstep. So a few days until that starts to take place. Yeah. Now, the title of this was after, after the NVIDIA conference. So I know there's a lot of hype around NVIDIA, how well that company has done as an investment itself. And now they have this huge conference and you were there. Tell us why you were attending and, how, and what happened well you know we're in the we're in the uh deep in the ai space and you know nvidia is the engine uh basically uh it's uh it's in a league of its own you know based on its hardware and software and um i've never been at a conference that's been so busy uh and it did it it did not fail to deliver the the the, the keynote address by jensen wang which was in the uh, hockey arena where the San Jose Sharks play, like 25,000 people there, not an empty seat. He spoke for two straight hours and started his talk at, I think, uh, two o'clock or something like that, uh, West Coast time, so after market. And during his talk, 14 press releases came out and they were all material, you know, starting with their new GPU Blackwell, which is mind boggling, mind boggling. 30x times uh, processing power of a year ago, their ability to power robotics, uh, the omniverse, predicting weather, 
every single major tech company uh, was quoted uh, in 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 a way that uh, was extremely you know flattering to Nvidia and um, often you know describe some of the uh, relationships that are had technology technological relationships um, what's what's in store in the AI world is is actually going to be off the planet it's 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 growing at such a pace and we don't see that slowing and now with what Nvidia is bringing to the table it's just going to accelerate everything that's already on hypercycle <laughs> so it's it's it was an amazingly a great experience, uh, like I say, did not fail to, uh, you know, excite um, in terms of where we feel the whole industry is going. It confirms our business model, um, and it's going to be an exciting time uh, uh, in the future here that will impact all companies on planet Earth. So wow. very positive, very positive. I can't imagine the excitement being there. So what are the highlight points? Well, I think it's, you know, there were so many seminars, everything from supercomputers to quantum processing, like everything's quantum leaps. So the highlights are, is a book. There are so many major developments around NVIDIA, like I say, with every other major company, um, you know, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, it just goes on. And by the way, all those CEOs were there. My Adele, Michael Dell was sitting in the front row. So it was an all-star uh, event. Uh, Jensen was amazing. Um, he was funny. He didn't lose a beat. He didn't have a teleprompter. And very articulate on, you know, orders of magnitude, uh, technological evolution, which is all revolutionary. So... There were just many, many highlights, but uh, it totally reinforces where um, where this industry is going and the impact it's going to have on every company and person in, in this world. That's crazy. Man, it's exciting to be at the forefront and seeing this happen in real time. People that were against AI are watching it change and revolutionize the way business is done. Hopefully not the intrusive parts. Everybody's going to have to deal with that. But <laughs> it's really revolutionizing business, sales, and many other things. So what what is this? I hear about 14 press releases in just two hours. Can you explain that a little bit? Some of the people listening want to know. Well, as I just said, it, it touched on all these areas. Um, you know, And that was that, NVIDIA uh, put out it, these releases? Yeah, I, I encourage everybody to just go and look at uh, NVIDIA's press releases on that day. And to read them all because they're all very comprehensive and they're all, um, you know, major, major in innovations. All right. Well, um, in the video, you mentioned the relationship TotaQ has with HyperCycle. Can you expand more about how the two companies are related? And can you also please expand on how HyperCycle and SingularityNet with Ben Gortzel are, are working together. Yeah, so TotaQ uh, and HyperCycle, uh, which HyperCycle is a joint venture uh, partnership between Ben Gortzel Singularity, which he's been working on AI for 30 years or so, um, needed scalability, uh, was using Cardano and then found that just blockchain is not scalable. And that's when he uh, reached out and met with Tufi Saliba, who had been working on the TOTA protocol. And TOTA is the engine that makes HyperCycle happen so that you can have internet of AI and uh, uh, unlimited transactions per second at the most minimal, minimal cost. The same protocol is what TOTAQ is built on. And that's why I mentioned before, micropayments you couldn't do before uh, because again, you couldn't do unlimited transactions and the cost was too expensive. So basically they're both built on the same protocol and there will be some um, relationship in terms of joint ventures uh, in their various initiatives where, you know, TotaQ is going to use some of their AI and so forth. Uh, but, you know, that hasn't been uh, publicly uh, disclosed as, as happening as of yet. Well, we'll all be on pins and needles until it does. 
can you talk about the recent momentum of the stock? I mean, last time we talked, you were trading at like 25 cents. The stock's at 65 or, or plus at the present second. I mean, if you're counting on issue or buyback, can you talk more about that as well? Well, since we spoke last time, uh, the company uh, has bought back 1 million shares of its own stock. So approximately 2%. So we've reduced the number of shares, again, by 2%, which I would say is a pretty strong statement of how the company feels about its future potential. And, um, you know, during that period of time, um, people have started to dig in and look at our YouTube channel. We announced yesterday that we've launched it, but if people who are now drilling down and going to our YouTube channel and listening to the interviews of these companies, uh, for example, Infinity AI, uh, which is basically AI to manage smart cities, for the sewage and water, they just received another contract yesterday morning. And, you know, the potential of that company is, is significant, and we own a very large position in it. So I think that people are, are starting to go down the rabbit hole and look at uh, a number of the, of the companies that, that we're involved in and realizing that, you know, the potential of each of those is it's substantial and it's going to all have an impact on 3D. So that has really, you know, started the progress of more investors coming, coming into the company. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, buying begets buying momentum begets momentum. But as I say to people, I, I think we're just beginning. I think so too. So before we move any further, what is the YouTube channel that I can post in the comments section for everybody to get a hold of? Uh, basically, it's 3D Capital YouTube. Um, or you can go to the website and go under the media section, and there's the YouTube channel is, is a link there. I'm searching it now. Yeah, I'm gonna put a link in the chat for everybody. Here we go. I got it. And let's see. All right. Copy. There we go. I'm adding this to the chat. All right, next question and reply. Um, looking at some of the other investments, can you talk? Now, this, this is going out of, out of our, our AI and technology-based conversation for a brief moment. But again, you did tell everybody that you are a company that incubates great ideas and great technology and companies that, are, that have the ability to generate good money. And one of those things is Ivy Can Can you um, – I mean, Avicana is, is based purely on the fact that it's medicinal cannabis and safe dose is not retail consumption. So the recent acquisition of the medical cannabis division of shoppers, can you let everybody know about that and tell them what kind of catalysts are involved with it? Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, I believe uh, an amazing company that's substantially undervalued. Um, they purchased the, uh, the, the medical cannabis portal of Shoppers Drug Mart, I believe Canada's biggest uh, drugstore chain. And they they basically, I would say, we're doing two, two and a half million dollars a month and uh, and very good gross margins. And Avacan had bought, bought the company for zero cash, zero debt, and zero equity, just a net profits interest, which is was an amazing acquisition. But what came with it were 30,000 patients, 20,000 patients active. So what is Avicana's main really focus in their business? They want to develop pharmaceutical drugs. They want to be a drug company. They're not, when, when people use the word medical cannabis, really sometimes they're just talking about CBD and maybe some THC. What Avicana does is it creates proprietary formulations that target uh, specific diseases and problems. 
About a month ago, they just received their very first drug approval. It was in Colombia, and it was a, a, a product or a drug called Trunorex. What is Trunorex? Trunorex is a generic uh, drug that allows the, for the treatment of epilepsy, and, and especially in the pediatric side. GW Pharma is the only drug company in the medical cannabis space, and it was they created a product called uh, a drug called Epidiolex. Epidiolex is extremely expensive and does about eight hundred million a year in revenue. Trunorex is a generic version of that that probably costs one twentieth per family or per per person. So this is, could end up being a blockbuster drug that they can sell in many countries. And the margins on drugs, as you know, as you know, is very high. This is just one of many drugs in their pipeline. They've also just press released two pharma deals, but they couldn't disclose the name of the pharma companies, which is not unusual. Uh, in the short run, because uh, they don't like to be disclosed, you know, for competitive reasons in most cases. Um, the market on this stock really has not responded in the way that it should respond because very few people know about the company. But I believe that this company is um, a, ten, a 10 bagger all day long. They basically acquired Shoppers Drug Art business. So now, they're a, they're a $30 million a year revenue company, no longer $4 million. They're very close to break even, if not so right now. They have a drug pipeline. They have multiple pharmaceutical partners. And they're trading at a market cap just over one times revenue. And the revenue is 50% gross margin. So it's not low margin revenue. So this company is totally mispriced. And I believe this year... Um, people are, are going to be very, very surprised at how well this company is going to do. And I believe the stock price is going to reflect that. Uh, we've been in it for seven years. We've helped it. Seven. We, yeah, we've guided it. We've invested a lot of money. We work, we help management. Um, we advise them where, where necessary. And their proprietary uh, IP is I believe better than any other company in the space. And just the fact that they were able to get these two big pharma uh, companies to endorse them, I think is a huge feather in their cap. And, you know, it, it, yes, it's different than AI, but it's best in class. And I believe it's sort of just undiscovered at this point, but I believe it will get discovered because the fundamentals are just too strong. What company gets a drug approved and trades at this type of market cap, none that I know of. Yeah, uh, well, you, you've got uh, a habit of playing the long game in a very fortuitous way. Um, I think that's a great idea. You know, you see the end goal of where a company is going, and you know how you can help guide them to do that. And it's really exciting to hear the things that you're involved with. On the other really interesting in investment, uh, that you mentioned recently in a press release, actually, or was it on an interview on your YouTube channel? Um, could you explain to everybody else a little bit about Neurable? Um, and it's using so, like through headphones and active all, activate all sorts of devices, but it, it seems like a non-invasive alternative to Elon Musk company uh, brand Neuralink. Yeah, can you, can you tell us yeah. more about that? Yeah, well, I I um, I think people should wait. Uh, for our posting, um, uh, the, the founder and CEO is being interviewed tomorrow, and basically it should be uploaded to our YouTube channel next week. But yes, Neuralink is, is invasive. We are non-invasive. And th this is the year that the company is commercializing. So I think that uh, the CEO will have a lot to say about this. We're extremely excited. Uh, their affiliation with Harvard, uh, some of their uh, venture partners are FANG companies, if you will. And I'm going to not steal his thunder, but yes, you, you can basically. <laughs> so use answer headphones. this. You can use Because this isn't part of his thunder. How long have you been invested in this? 
I'd say four years. Ah, so there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes for four years. Yeah, yep. awesome. you know, listen, it takes time to build real companies. And we've been doing this, as I said, the, the reason that, you know, we kicked off our outward campaign on 3D uh, with you uh, was because after seven years of basically head down, stealth, building all these companies, this is the year of commercialization. So we're extremely excited. And what I would urge people to do is look at the press release that 3D uh, put out yesterday, where we discussed which companies we had on our YouTube channel, but we also discussed or mentioned the companies that we are about to interview. So in other words, we own them, but we have not yet uh, interviewed uh, management and founders and so forth. And the, the content that's going to be posted, I think, is going to be extremely interesting. And um, from areas of, you know, cybersecurity, uh, you know, right on down to, to um, longevity uh, with major uh, milestones being hit. So there's going to be a lot of exciting content here in the next 30 days. And we're going to unveil that one at a time, like I say, uh, starting with Neuro, uh, uh, Neurobull next week. So what time can they expect to hear the interview tomorrow on, um, on you? Is that going to no, be live so, on YouTube or where is it going to be? No, no, no. The interview is being done privately. And then okay. there is like sometimes we just shorten it and so forth. So it doesn't go on. So it's being done and then it will be sort of edited and posted uh, sometime next week. Awesome. We'll be looking for that. I mean, with all your investments, can you tell us what it is? Uh, what what is that threshold for disclosure? And can you tell investors places they can look to find out about 3D's individual investments? Yeah. So we uh, the board has uh, has adopted a disclosure policy. Uh, when we make investments for five hundred thousand dollars or more, we announce them. Um, we also, uh, depending on uh, whether we're what percentage we own of a company, if we're an insider, and so forth. Uh, if you look to our MDMA and you look to our financial statements, you'll you'll see there is disclosure of of other companies. Um, and then there's a number that we don't disclose, but we are now going to disclose them through the YouTube channel. And so we mentioned them, even though they're below our uh, let's call it materiality threshold. We're still going to interview them because we believe the potential is going to be material. So, you know, so 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 there's a whole pipeline of extremely interesting companies, uh, digital asset companies, um, a cross section that we have not disclosed before, but we did disclose yesterday that will be interviewed and we'll be able to share with everybody the developments in those companies. Awesome. Well, you guys, you heard it here first. Um, when is TotoQ going to launch, and how do you predict the launch of TotoQ to go? Well, I think as I as I said just before, uh, the launch is is starting in April. There will be you know a major major press launch that the dates are being uh, secured. Uh, but you know we're 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 basically looking imminently uh, for that to become a commercial micropayments company. Awesome. Now, when is oh, already got that? And that's gonna be next week. Are there any other investments or catalysts that you want to comment on at the present time? No, I think the key is is that people should look at our YouTube channel um, and and you know take some time and pick one a, a company here and there. Just like today, say I featured Avicana. Um, perhaps next time there'll be another company that I can talk about. Um, but you know, all these companies I believe have. The chances to be, you know, 10, 20, 30 baggers, if you will. And the more people can listen to that content. So it's not me talking about those individual companies, but the but the founders and management themselves, you know, people will get a feel for it. And also by by listening to those interviews, you can then go to those companies, websites and social media and find out even more then we are disclosing about them. So, uh, you know, I, I'd say it would be, you know, a good exercise to do it if you want to really see what the potential in 3D could be. 
And I think you'll find that it's overwhelmingly um, interesting uh, that our growth can come from so many different directions and any, yeah, company, any company can move our needle. So uh, uh, that's the best way, I think, for people who want to, you know, you have to do some homework in these companies um, to really understand them, to realize why, you know, 3D, even though it's doubled in price, you know, should not be sold for, say, for a profit because the best is yet to come. Of course, everybody can make their own investment decision. But the more people go down this rabbit hole, I think the more that they'll get become extremely excited in what what this company could become. I, I definitely agree. Um, I do have a great question now. As somebody that has five kids, and I, uh, you don't want to play favorites, but at the same time, you recognize each each one for different gifts and different abilities. And out of all the investments and babies that you have underneath the IDKFF brand, um, what ones stand out the most to you? What, what ones do you think that people might want to look at for near term as a possible investment outside of IDKFF? Well, um, some of these you can't uh, invest in. For example, TOTIQ and uh, HyperCycle are both private companies. So those, yes. I believe, are going to be very special and very substantial. Avicana, which I believe can be a 20-bagger, a 30-bagger, I believe that strongly, it does trade. It trades in the U.S. and it trades in Canada. So, you know, that could be one for people to look at because, um, like I say, the, it's one that is, is publicly traded while the others are not. So out of your out of the investments you're connected to right now, which ones are publicly traded? Well, there's a whole list here, uh, but um, I don't have it all in front of me. Um, but I think if you go to the YouTube channel, you, you'll be able to uh, to determine that. Um, you know, uh, you know, for example, uh, Infinity AI trades, Habakana trades, AIML, which is uh, basically has created a uh, a blood pressure device that's uh, going through the FDA right now that we think is mm -hmm. also substantial. It's also AI driven. Um, I think it's all those names uh, that I've disclosed. If people Googled them, they'd, they'd find out which ones are, are, are publicly traded and what those uh, the stock symbols are for those companies. I don't have that whole list awesome. in front of me. Well, I'm really looking forward to getting you on one more time after some of this news comes out. I mean, you have a launch happening in April with uh, TotaQ, and I'm excited to see that happen. Um, with the developments between HyperCycle and TotaQ with the blockchain stuff, and potentially or maybe hearing NVIDIA's name pop up again, that would really be exciting to discuss. And here you have... Um, Avacana doing great and other companies like you said AIML. Um, it's it's really it's really going to be wonderful to see with your stock structure, the chart set up with all the news that you have to announce and money coming to the bottom line. It's it's going to be nice to see where the company's valued out here coming a few months from now. No, absolutely. And you know, for example, I mentioned Infinity AI, which is again AI for smart cities. Uh, they've been getting contract after contract. Um, the company believes it's going to be profitable in the coming months. So that's a pretty significant uh, achievement. And not only that, the company's market cap is probably a fifth, one fifth of any competitor in that space that has uh, MRR, which is monthly recurring revenue. And they're basically getting city after city, which is extremely difficult. So this is another one that's hiding in plain sight. And like it trades at eight cents. Um, it should not be trading at eight cents, um, especially it's going to be profitable. So, you know, that's one that I believe imminently uh, could do quite well. And uh, people are more and more inbound inquiries from management, I'm hearing, um, including some major funds in, in the U.S., because they're they're on the radar, so I'd, I'd strongly encourage people to look at Infinity AI. Uh, and what's their American ticker? Uh, the, the Canadian is IAI, and it could be like IAIFF. That's kind of I think a lot of the times what it is. But if you look at Infinity AI, it, you, you should find it.
I believe it trades in the U.S. anyway. I don't think it's FF. I-A-I. Hmm. Well, you can, if you do I-A-I I'll look it up. in Canada, you'll find it. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. it's, it's uh, C-D-T-A-F. Okay. <laughs> yep. C-D-T-A-F. That's awesome. correct. Yeah, it's up eleven percent today. Nice yeah, move. Yeah, I, I would I would strongly urge people look at that one. You know, when you have so many beautiful children, it's hard to uh, you know keep picking them. But uh, that's <laughs> another one that, even though I didn't talk a, a lot today, um, I, it's it's just I've taken for granted what a great company it is, and it's just starting to get discovered. Yeah, I see that. And looking at the chart and the volume and stuff, it's been it's been uh, moving up steadily since. Yeah, and if you look at the Canadian quote, where where a lot of the volume is October. It, yeah, the volume's really picked up. Yeah, yeah. Is there any? Okay, so are you okay with opening up the floor for a few questions from investors at this time? Absolutely, of course. All right, guys. Now, one of the people on here, I'm going to call him out. But DI has been slapping the ass on IDKFF today. He's got probably 60,000 uh, shares, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he might have a question or two. Uh, the other questions that were had so far in text, um, somebody said that the uh, email contact information on your website was um, down. So they're not able to actually email you. So maybe if uh, you could address that, that would be great. It's not really a question. Uh, uh, I believe everything's working. Um, uh, I'm just asking uh, someone here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, there's an email on the website. That works. I think it might be information at, yeah, info at 3dcap.com. Okay. All right. Um Anybody have any questions for Sheldon before we go? I know I'm looking forward to having him back again. Probably the stock's going to be a lot higher by that point, but I don't have a crystal ball. But just based on the amount of news, the amount of change is happening within this company and their stock structure, there's a really good chance that we're going to see really positive things out of them. So know what you own. Do your due diligence. There's a lot to dig on. Hopefully Mr. Hobbs will – get a new itch and start to go after IDKFF with some veracity. Here, stock awareness. Do you have a question? Go ahead and speak, man. Stock awareness. Go ahead. We hear you. Oh, he okay. gave up. <laughs> That's not like him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right. Anybody else have any questions for Sheldon? I think we cover everything pretty well every time we talk with you. That's why. Fair enough, guys. Sheldon, man, it's really it's an honor and a pleasure to have you on our show. I'm excited to be able to let everybody know about the updates of IDKFF between now and then, as well as updates on the interview when it's posted. I'll definitely share that to all of our followers. And uh, any any press releases or information that's coming out, we'll be happy to put out for you. Yeah, Looks I, like we I'd have a couple bubbling up here. Sorry, Sheldon. Hello? I'd encourage questions. people also to follow my social media as we post things there as well on a continuous basis. But, yeah, please, go ahead. Uh, I want to clarification on the tickers again y'all said uh c t is in tom d a f c d as in david t a f t a f david and, tango alpha frank and what about the other one the i a m oh he's talking about infinity oh a i m l a i m l a, -A, -M -L. a, -A, -M -L. a, -A -M -L. no i, I found the a I M L F. F. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was making sure. Um, yeah. That's the heart. That's the heart company. Got you. Uh, I have a question, and I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but the Smart Cities one uh, is that the Infinity company? Yes, Infinity AI. Okay. Have you ever checked out 
PMPG, which is actually currently in a caveat emptor, but more importantly, uh, the tech, they have 32 patents on what they call road turtles. I and mean, then you may be familiar already with them. I don't know, but that is, they own 32 patents right in that alley of smart cities. Um, the man who designed those, um, the little square yellow things that are in the middle of the road, they, a, a separate person, um, filed patents to put technology in those little square yellow things and and then transmit it to the reflectors yes he he they own 32 patents to tr put to put the the tech in those and then it transfers the information to a pole every 5 miles i believe but i was pointing it to you for you to maybe look into it because I owned it a while back and it went caveat enter and the guy was trying to get 15 to 18,000 to get back current, but they have 32 um, patents that they're holding for smart city stuff. So I don't know. You may look into that. So, so let me just um, maybe better define what the uh, okay. I, uh, Infinity AI does. What it does is it manages the sewer and water systems of cities okay. through, time, through AI, which is basically through time series data algorithms. Right. So smart cities is a big, big word. Correct. Uh, but what they manage is specifically the vertical of all the water and sewage, which um, the problem is the infrastructure cannot keep up with the population uh, right. and growth. So you have to be much more efficient in these systems. And that's what um, Infinity AI does. It helps to efficiently save water, you know, uh, lower sewage uh, processing in a very, very smart way. So uh, there's many other aspects of what could be defined uh, as applications in the smart city world, but this is what their specialty is. Right, so I'm just make two last comments and I'll jump off. Um, what I understood theirs to be, and I totally understand what you're saying is, um, the transmission of data of, I guess, weather to cities and governments and everybody as people are driving up and down the road, you know, like real time. So that is a different application that they were working on. Um, the question back on your companies, um, let's see here. Are there any real uh, transactions that have already transpired on the TOTA? Yes. Yeah, the micropayments system, TOTAQ, has been in operation for a bit. It has um, transactions going through it all the time. Is that correct, Sheldon? It, it is live, but the growth is, is uh, about to happen. So they've been processing correct. it. The technology works. Um, uh, transactions are happening. Companies are continuously signing up but I think it's about to get some momentum. It's pre-launch, yeah. Once, yeah exactly. Again, we're, we're right at the cusp of April, so you'll see a dramatic increase. Follow it on, okay, I, sorry for the rudimentary, it, um, OTC method, what's the pink uh, platform? <laughs> sorry, on, I can't remember the name of it, but. OTCmarkets.com? No, on, for, for cryptocurrency um, trading. Oh, uh, it's logo is like pink. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what, what you mean. Oh, goodness. It shows all the different coins and, and not, tokens and everything. Oh. Not Coinbase or Coin Market Cap? Coin Market Cap? Dex? No, no, this one's pink. It's, uh, it has, um, ah, I know they'll be on it. Um, I did see Tota Q on Coin Market Cap. You did? Yeah, okay. pretty sure. Uh, to yeah. Totally no, it's, yeah. it's not. It's not there. Oh, it isn't. Okay, I not? saw it somewhere and then uh, yeah, tried not, to buy it's it, not, but it's, it's not. It's, it's not, not open right now. Yeah, it's not. It's not ready yet. Yeah. No, but it's uh, the total notes are basically basically fixed at a dollar US notional price. Oh man. 
find it. I I blanked on the name of this um, platform. I know that they'll end up being on, but it's they, you can they have liquidity pools and everything on this platform. I know MVCO has used it uh, quite consistently to make money in the past. Not um, Uniswap. Uniswap. Thank you very much. Uh, there you go. Yeah, Uniswap. Aren't you guys going to be represented on Uniswap? No. 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 Fair enough. What I have about, so much to learn uh, when it comes to crypto. <laughs> we've got some uh, influencing influence. Why don't you go ahead? I know you've been following this uh, all the way. Have you interviewed Todak? Todak you. Oh, the, the interview is happening tomorrow, and then they're going to post it after they get the edited video done next week. I, so next week... There's a link in the yeah. chat of 3D Capital's YouTube channel. Yeah. You so, want to click on that and subscribe. So TotaQ has been interviewed, but it has not yet been posted to the YouTube channel. It's going to happen next week. Lindsay, do you have a question? You are up. Hey, guys. Um, just a quick question for Sheldon. I know he sure. alluded to... Uh, Tenant FinTech is being something that is going to be coming up as an interview. They've been invested for a while, I know. I follow the story pretty closely. It's been up, well, it's been up as high as 14 down to a lot lower. Have you guys been in and out of it, or can you speak anything to any catalyst for that company going forward? Um, I, I, I would rather wait till the CEO is interviewed. Um, so I don't say anything that I shouldn't be saying. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, actually. I agree with you. Um, so is, I guess it's safe to say that 3D Cap is still invested in Tenant. Yes. Great. Good to know. Yeah, uh, we're very we're very high on their business model. Yeah, that's great. I, that that company is an enigma to me. They have the potential to to do some crazy things, and I'm just watching them carefully. And I'm also an investor as my, my as as well. But um, obviously, down like all of us. Yeah. 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 I think they're just waiting to complete a financing, and then um, I think things should get interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thanks. Anybody else have a question before we move on? Guys, there's going to be a lot more news to come out. I promise that OTC Method and myself, when there's press releases and information on HyperCycle or TotaQ or the Heart Company or um, Avicana, any of these companies, we're going to help share that because we're actually excited to see the growth of IDKFF and the companies involved in it. Um, the stock chart looks great. Uh, I do have one final question. When you mentioned the company has bought back a million shares of stock, is that from on the Canadian markets or in the U.S. markets? No, it's, it's, most of the volume uh, on the stock is in Canada. So it's okay. And we're, we're not allowed to buy back shares in the United States, so it's it's on the IDK ticker symbol up in Canada. Ah, that makes sense. I think we have one last question from the I who is slapping the ass on your American stock today. What's going on, man? The I, you in? Unmute yourself. You can, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, now I can hear you. Sheldon, I have a question for you. What's your end game with the stock? What do you, you know, where do you want your stock to go? Are you going to try and uplist? Um, what's your, what's your main plan? My main plan is to build this uh, to a billion dollar company, and then every and, every exchange in the world will uh, will be after us to list. So we'll definitely, uh, you know, list on more senior exchanges as time goes on. Uh, as we meet the criteria, but uh, my objective is for it to be a billion dollar company. You think you can get there? I've done it before. I definitely think so. Okay. Wait, wait. How many times have you done it before? <laughs> well, I well, I've had many billion dollar Ultimate, exits, right? but certainly with Pine Tree, which was a a very similar company, IDK is in that mold. Um, you know, we did it there. Went up to a billion four in value. Um, so I think um, I think. What 3D has now is much bigger than what Pine Tree had. So um, I believe it's a target that's achievable. So what's your target uh, do you, as far as like a stock price? And, and also, do you have the assets? And, no, and the you can't do that. Make it? Well, do you have the means and the assets to, to accomplish that goal? 
Uh, 100%. They're, they're already within our current portfolio. I don't even have to do another transaction. And okay, we're gonna fair get enough. There. <laughs> That's a strong statement. I'm going to make a short out of that statement right there. It's an excellent statement. Of course, keep in mind, it is a forward-looking statement. So do your own due diligence and talk to your investment advisor before making a decision based on it. Yeah, I, I, I urge people to look at all the companies we've disclosed, uh, listen to the YouTube, uh, go to all these companies' websites, and, you know, Try to look and see what the potential could be. And I think then you'll internalize that, you know, there's there's a lot of upside here. It's not there yet. But you know what? We made these investments because we believed it, it could happen. And this is obviously um, when you're in the microcraft, it's a high risk return uh, business. But if you get it right, um, it can be very dynamic. And uh, that's what we're hoping is going to happen. Awesome. Well, Sheldon, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure having you on here. Yeah, Each thanks, time is riveting. Thanks, to everybody. And we for look attending. forward to having you back again. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thank you Great. for coming. Thanks, thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you.